Hey guys, so today I wanted to give you a quick introduction to how the ears work. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna talk you through an image that we created on the board last class just to give you an introduction to what the ears are all about and the different parts. So, um, let's see here, let's shrink me down a little bit. Good. All right, so here's what we've got. Um, um, this is a picture of the ear. The ear is divided up into three parts. We've got the external ear, which includes the oracle. That's just the outer kind of um, part of your ear, your ear lobe. It's made up of elastic cartilage. Then we have the ear canal. That's the hole, obviously, that um, transmits sound into the deeper parts of the ear. Um, the middle ear consists of this air-filled chamber that contains the ossicles. Those are the three ear um, tiny bones inside the ear. And then the, the inner ear is um, consists of these fluid-filled structures on the right. So we'll kind of start with the external ear. The job of the oracle is to funnel sounds into the ear. So the whole job of, of all this is to convert sounds into action potentials or brain signals. Um, I want you guys to think about sounds as waves of pressure, waves of high and low pressure that travel through the air. And the job of the ears is to convert those sound waves of high and low pressure into action potentials. The job of the external ear um, begins with the oracle and it funnels these sound waves into the ear canal. So if we kind of zoom in, I don't know, even on the picture. So if we zoom in, um, the ear canal is not very long. It's like a centimeter, centimeter and a half long. And it's going to carry these sounds to the base of the ear canal, which is a thin membrane of skin called the tympanic membrane or the eardrum. As these sounds come in, they're going to cause that tympanic membrane to beat back and forth. And this tympanic membrane, as it beats back and forth, it's going to capture important information that, about that particular sound. For example, if we go over here, this top little squiggly line represents a sound that's like medium pitch and medium volume. If we were to compare that to a sound below it, see how the wavelength is much shorter? That's a sound that's going to be um, higher in pitch, but the same volume. And then this sound just below that, it has a longer wavelength, so that's a lower pitch sound. Now, um, this sound below that, see how it has a shorter amplitude, like it's been kind of squished vertically? That represents a sound that has a lower volume. So these are the differences between different volumes and pitches of sound. But what's important here is that this tympanic membrane, as it beats back and forth, it's going to capture that information. If a high pitch sound hits it, it's going to beat back and forth really fast. If a low pitch sound hits it, it'll beat back and forth much slower. If a loud sound hits it, the tympanic membrane moves across a greater distance. So it's pretty cool that the, the membrane can capture this. All right, now another thing is that in a healthy person, the external ear should be filled with air. There are special glands called ceruminous glands. These are modified sebaceous glands in the epithelium or the epidermis of the ear canal, and they produce cerumen, which is just a fancy name for earwax. Earwax is actually really important for the health of our ears because it helps to naturally clean the ears as that wax is produced near the base of the ear canal and is pushed to the uh, surface. And it also um, prevents insects and other things from entering into and living in our ears. All right. Okay, now on the other side of the tympanic membrane, that's where we're going to have the, um, the, the middle ear. Now the middle ear is also filled with air and it contains the three ossicles. From left to right, these include the malleus, the incus, and the stapes. Here are their names right here, malleus, incus, and stapes, right? Um, now, okay, so as the tympanic membrane beats, it's going to cause these ossicles, these bones, to vibrate um, back and forth. So in other words, these bones, these ossicles, convert sounds that are in air and in the tympanic membrane into the vibrations that are in bone. But not only that, but these ossicles help to amplify that sound they turn them into a larger signal. You'll notice that there's a tube right here. This is called the auditory tube, and it connects the middle ear with the back of the throat, the back of the pharynx. This is going to be super important with equalizing the pressure inside the middle ear as pressure increases or decreases around our bodies. Like if you go up in an airplane, there's not as much pressure out there that produces 
a difference in pressure from the inside of the middle ear to the outside, that imbalance in pressure is going to be really uncomfortable and it puts exerts force on the tympanic membrane and the ossicles, so it's important for us to be able to equalize that pressure by letting air come, um, or letting air escape from the middle ear, in the case you're up um, high in a plane. Okay, so that's good there. Now if fluid gets into that region of the ear, it causes a middle ear infection. Um, it's easy to do, especially after you get a cold, mucus might block the auditory tube. It's also known as the eustachian tube and that can allow um, mucus and stuff to get caught in the middle ear, which can get infected. Um, if that becomes a recurrent issue, um, a procedure to fix that, you can get tubes put in the, the tympanic membrane. That's where they cut a small incision in the tympanic membrane, and um, they place a little tube there, which will allow the mucus to drain out, um, which works really well, right? Okay, so Moving on, here we have the inner ear. Now this is a series of structures that are filled with fluid. Collectively, we have the vestibule right here. The semicircular canals are these tube-like structures. There's three sets of these uh, kind of semicircular tubes. And then finally, we over here we have the cochlea. The cochlea um, allows us to convert sounds into brain signals or action potentials. That's its overall job. The overall job of the vestibule is to detect linear acceleration both vertically and horizontally. And the job of the semicircular canals are to detect rotational acceleration. All of these operate um, by using hair cells. Hair cells are these specialized sensory cells that uh, will detect um, force right it will detect so basically what they are is these specialized cells that have these hair like projections um, made up of proteins that extend away from the cell body now if these hair like projections are deflected that will stimulate the hair cell and that will initiate a signal in the connected afferent neuron okay in the cochlea, as vibrations travel up the little tube that is found inside the cochlea, the, uh, these vibrations that um, will stimulate different parts of the cochlea and that will send a signal to the brain telling the brain that, um, that, that, that a sound is present. And really what happens is these ossicles will beat back and forth on the entrance to the cochlea that will transmit the vibration in the bone to the vibration in the fluid inside the cochlea. High-pitched sounds will vibrate the hair cells located near the entrance of the cochlea, while low-pitched sounds travel further up this spiral tube to stimulate the hair cells located near the end. Once those hair cells are stimulated, they will send an action potential into the connected afferent neuron that sends a signal to the brain, and the brain knows whether or not it's a high or low-pitched sound. Okay. Hair cells in the vestibule are stimulated when linear acceleration causes them to be deflected, such as when you ride in an elevator upwards or when you your car and you put on the brakes. And then finally, semi, finally semicircular canals are stimulated by rotational acceleration that would cause fluid in these canals to move when you're either spinning about laterally or head over heels, I guess and you have these hair cells at the base of the semicircular canals that would be deflected by this fluid motion and send a signal to the brain. So that's a quick overview of what happens in every kind of section. It is worth mentioning that I kind of didn't draw this to scale. Um, these regions of the drawing are a lot bigger um, relative to the oracle than, um, than they should be. So the real kind of proportions would kind of look like this in this smaller drawing where the oracle is quite large compared to the middle and the um, inner ear. They're going to be proportionally smaller. But I just made them bigger in that first drawing so you can see them better. All right, so hopefully that's a nice little intro and hopefully that gets us started with learning about the ear. Thank you.